All right, so I'm gonna gonna focus on Photoshop because I'll be doing Photo P in the afternoon session. That will be a different playlist. But it'll be nice to see how, how quickly we can build this, right? So right now, if I turn off both my guiding layers, both the one in the background and the one in the top, these are the vector shapes I have. They're all perfect circles. These are the easy ones, just using the ellipse tool and holding down shift. And they're all placed. Now let's do a little bit more interesting ones. So this one is not that much more difficult. I just use the ellipse tool, just like I was before, but I don't hold down shift. And I let it change to an oval. And then I don't even need to hit Command T because before you hit return on placing your vector shape, you can already rotate it and size it, right? So you can rotate and size all in one place. And then you hit Command T, and then you can use the Move tool to move it. And if you need to adjust it, you can hit Command T or Edit Free Transform in Photo P. And you can keep tweaking it, right? I can enlarge it and then hit Return. So now those are my vectors. Again, all perfectly clean at whatever resolution I want, as long as they stay vector shapes. So the trickier ones are these shapes, right? And you got to think of it like cutouts of construction paper. So I might start with an ellipse for that, the brim of the cowboy hat, but I'm not going to get the whole cowboy hat in one shape. I have to layer multiple shapes on top of each other, just like construction paper. So first, I'm going to try to get this bottom curve of the cowboy hat. I got to make it a little bit bigger. So Command T, stretch it a little bit better. So that's about right. Yep, I had it before. And you can do com Command Z while you're doing transforms just to, to step through your the different uh, keys you put in for transforming. So for instance, if I drop it a little bit lower there, but then hit Command Z, it will take me back to before I did that. All right now I got to get the shape right. And to do that, I'm going to use Command T again, but instead of just the regular rotate and scale, I'm going to right click within the transform box and use our old friend warp, the one that was so useful to us for our cartoon or our line art jumbles. And now I'm going to drag down on this part. Come on. This is why it's kind of made for a mouse. There we go, right in the center. And I'm going to try to find the bottom curve of that brim, right, for the cowboy hat. And then I can decide if I want to play with the corners or not. But because I want it to be somewhat symmetrical, I want to match it side to side. And again, we're not trying to perfectly match anything. We're just trying to learn how these tools work. And then I can hit return. And when this shows up, this is something new in Photoshop, this window. We want it to be a regular path. It's going to show it whenever you deviate from one of the regular shape tools because you're modifying it. So you don't need to have that show again. That's intentional. So I'm going to check don't show again and then say yes. All right. Now, if I turn off my guiding layers, it now looks like I put a blindfold on my emoji. So I want to move that behind my other pieces of construction paper, right? And then I want to get its color right. And to do that, I turn on my background guiding layer, and then I double click on my ellipse, and then I can just select the color. You see, that's pretty darn close. Now what about this next shape? Instead of building it on top of the eyeballs, I'm going to build it on top of the shape I just made. 
And I'm going to do an ellipse. And then I'm going to rotate it a little bit. Whoops. There we go. And then I'm going to immediately change its color to this lighter tan. So I want to get these inside shapes first. You know, something like that. You try to keep it as simple as you can. And then I'm going to do Command T. And I'm going to warp it. To kind of point it a little bit. And bring it out towards the edge. Like so. Then maybe even loop it up like this. You can get pretty complicated shapes with this warp tool, but not unlimited types of shapes, right? By using these anchor points. Okay, now I've got that shape. So you can see it a little bit better. I can close some of the, the other stuff, like the guiding layer behind. And that's going to be one half of it. And then I want this other shape. So this is a, a handy trick. I'm going to duplicate Command-J, just like I've been doing before. And then I'm going to hit Command-T, just like I've been doing before. Then I'm going to right-click, as always going to warp it. But this time, I'm just going to flip the duplicate horizontally. And then I'm going to hold down Shift, and I'm going to line it up over here. So this is what's called a compound path, where I'm making one shape using two different shapes. And I can use the arrow keys and the move tool to squeeze them together slightly. You see that? So let's see what I've got in terms of vector shapes. Now I've got this. It's getting there. Now let's move those two ellipses underneath my brim. Now, you see how I have both of them selected. You can select multiples by holding down Shift. I'm going to duplicate both of those by hitting Command-J. And then I'm going to hit Command-T and grow them bigger out from the center, holding down Option to make the full hat. And then I'm going to change the color, which I have to do one at a time, unfortunately, to this darker color. Okay, now I'm going to move those underneath the lighter ones inside. So this cowboy hat so far, I'm not done with it, but so far it's made of this shape for the brim. Here, I'll use the move tool and it'll give me a little outline around each one. This shape for the brim, this shape for the inside highlight duplicated, flipped, moved for this side of the highlight. Both of those copied and grown for that side of the outside of the hat and for that side of the outside of the hat. So five different vectors make that hat. And the only thing I'm missing is some sort of stripe that was across it. So I'm going to change it a little bit and I'm just going to use a new tool on top of my highlights on the hat a new shape tool, I'm going to use the rectangle tool for the first time. And I'm just going to do a rectangle. I'm going to make it the right color, which is going to be the dark brown. And I can just do a straight line, but that doesn't look all that good, right? So what can I do to curve that? Transform. Transform. Command T, and then right click and warp. And the hardest thing about getting a clean, you can see, the hardest thing about getting kind of a clean curve is to grab it in the middle of a section, which you should be able to do, but sometimes you have to, to kind of wake it up. So I want it to be fairly symmetrical still, and I can also push it up on these edges. So I want it to look like an even curve. Okay. 
And you're not going to get this perfect, and neither am I. It's about practicing these skills. And seeing vectors for the first time, like they're just cutouts of, of construction paper. Okay, now, if I want perfect symmetry, I can start to use my rulers as well with my move tool. And if I click on the ruler and drag, I can get guides. And guides can help me line up these transform points. You can see how it's all a little off. The whole hat's a little off. But honestly, that's true of the actual emojis too. So that's just how it works. But if you want it all perfect, you can use guides and you can match them. We're not able to zoom in to see the emoji. Zoom in to see it. Let's see. Well, we can turn it on. We make a well, guiding. Like on the actual emoji that we have. Like on the phone. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the graphics are... They don't need to be super, super clean to be effective for how they're used. All right, so I think that's my cowboy hat. But I don't like how low it is, right? So this is what I can do. Instead of moving each of these pieces up, because now this is six different vector shapes making this hat, if I select them all using Shift, and it will show me what they are as I go. So now that's all the vector shapes for the hat. I can put them in a folder. So a group. And now it's like it's one vector shape. But really it's all the individual ones. And now I can move that group using the move tool. Whoops. But I have to change auto select and just uncheck it. So it will instead select the group instead of the individual layer. And I can move that hat wherever I want. Not only that, I can hit Command-T and I can grow that hat and it will be perfectly clean. I can even put it at a little tilt, which can be cuter, right? And if I need more, if I need more space around it, you know, because I don't want it to crop off, I can go to Image, Canvas Size, and grow that canvas size. Let's try. 9 by 12. As long as it's at least 8 by 10, you're good. Then I can go to the background, unlock it, fill it with white again. Yeah, I kind of like the tilted hat. I could even warp that whole group. So Command-T. Oh, you can't warp it, but I can distort it. And the reason I can't warp it is because we still want to keep them as individual vector shapes. But you see, I can get pretty complicated shapes just by manipulating the ones that already exist. Like that. Yeah, I think I like that better. So if I go in my history, there we go. And I can keep transforming it as long as I don't rasterize it and playing with the exact shape I want. So first you have to make the shape, then you can transform it and warp it. Okay, so I've got the cowboy part. What I need is the Hawaiian part of my theme. So I need the, the collared shirt. And I don't want kind of puffy collars necessarily, though that's kind of nice. So I'm going to use another tool. I'm going to use... It's interesting. The newest version of Photoshop has this. It's the triangle tool, which they never used to have because a triangle is just a polygon with three sides. So whether you use the polygon tool with three sides or the triangle tool, it will be a three-sided shape that you can work with. So if I want this to be the color of a shirt, right? first I just put something down, choose a color for it. We'll just use gray for the time being but I'm going to change it to be like a Hawaiian shirt color. I want to check its properties. I think because I was using groups, it went back to defaults and it filled it with white with a one pixel stroke. I want to make sure that stroke is turned off. So it's just a shape. So stroke turned off under properties, which is right above your layers. And then I can play with, ah, with free transforming it. Command-T for short. I wish Command-T worked 
in Photo P 